Okay. And uh, I was like, man, I'm not preaching this morning. So listen, so so there, there's there's a few things that I do when I do preach, and I don't like to preach very often, if any. But uh, they, they were all broken this morning. I drank coffee. I got a pink Bible. So so anyways, but uh, but anyways, God is good, and He is Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. And He He uh, I went for a bike ride there last Sunday, or no, last Saturday. And uh, and then I went for a bike ride yesterday morning, and uh, before it got hot, and um, and anyways, um, God told me the exact same thing last Sunday or last Saturday, and then just yesterday Saturday, and uh, I, I just went for a bike ride last Saturday. I haven't rode for over probably eighteen miles, and it's been quite a few years. I usually don't ride much more than that. But last Saturday, I woke up and I weed eated for a little bit at the house, and um, and 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 I said, and I told Brian, I said, I'm gonna go for a bike ride. I'm gonna do a ride that I haven't done in a few years, and it's you know 29 miles. And uh, and anyways, I, I went, and and when I was riding, God just kept telling me the same thing. He just kept telling me the same thing. Embrace the climb. Embrace the climb. See, I'm different from other people. Like a lot of people, a lot of people, resistance will come and they will literally either bow down or they will cower. I was taught as a young wrestler that when resistance comes, that you dig in. You do not back down. You dig in. So I like the climb. I do. I really, it is awkward, but I love climbing. The downhill, I, it just cools me off. It's the climb. See, see, when you climb, climb produces, resistance produces endurance. Endurance produces perseverance. And when you are used to resistance, I have learned the older I get that the, the, the more resistance is coming my way. Yeah, this, this whole thing is waxing worse and waxing worse. But yeah, this body is getting closer to going to the ground too. And this body backtops me someday. But through my spirit, I can command this body to do what it don't want to do. I have learned to tell my body, you operate exactly the way God designed you to. No backtalk. Whether it's my ankle, my knees, my heart, you you are out of line right now. You are back talking. You fall right in line. So anyways, so I went on this ride and God just kept telling me, he just kept telling me, embrace the climb. And and and, and let me go, let me go here in um, Matthew, Matthew 26. And I just put this together in a matter of minutes. So Matthew 26, 39. And, and, and when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he went a little farther and he fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. You know what? I did not want to get I did not want to preach this morning. I was not prepared to do that. But I go back. You know, Sam is where he is right now. You've got to go back to the word of God. And the word of God said that he would be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So I am exactly where my feet brought me this morning. And so is Sam Dorsey is exactly where his feet took him. And for me to say anything else than that, that means God is not sovereign and that he is not in control and all this stuff we just land where we're at no god is sovereign and he's we are exactly where we're supposed to be right now and i thank god for that so so anyways so so in the garden in the garden he was saying he was saying god i know in the eternity past we had already come up with this plan of salvation but here we are i am this close to do to going to the cross and so what it was, was his body was back talking him saying, I really don't want to do this. But through the spirit, Jesus was saying, this must be done because Jesus is a man of his word. And if he already made a commitment to God, the father and God, the Holy Spirit, then Jesus Christ is going to uphold his, will, his, his, his bargain here. This is what he said he would do. So anyways, but he did say, if there is any other way. I would be more than happy to go that way. Yeah. But if you want me to go to the cross, then I will go to the cross because that's what we already discussed. So so anyways, let me go over the... the um, let me get a drink of water. I'm going to get thirsty real quick because I drank coffee this morning. And uh, anyways, so the act of propitiation. So when, when, when man sinned, when man sinned, God's eyes of anger burned towards man. It wasn't that way in the beginning. When he created Adam, him and Adam were buddies. And they walk, he come down and he walked in the cool of the day in the garden. But when, when, when Adam sinned and fell, it, that God's anger and wrath literally was directed right at Adam. Jesus Christ came along and he bridged that gap. 
So the act of propitiation, Jesus said, if it is not, if it is thy will, let this cup pass. What Jesus was saying is there is a cup of wrath that is coming to me. And I'm going to drink every drop of it, and I'm willing to do it. So, so, so God's anger towards man was directed right at mankind. When Jesus Christ came and he drank every drop in that cup, the act of propitiation was met. The anger of God not only came off of man, and it went back on what Christ did for us on the cross. So that's where now that we are saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, the anger of God is placed on Jesus Christ on the cross, not on us anymore. It's a good day for us. It's a good day for us that God's anger will never, never, never come on me. The wrath of God will come one day on this earth, and it is directed towards those who are not in the cross and, and covered by the blood. It's the act of propitiation. It is the greatest gift that God has ever gave mankind is salvation. That's why every day we should say, God, restore the joy of my salvation unto me because my salvation is everything. Nothing, nothing, nothing this world can take from me because God himself gave it to me. So therefore the enemy cannot take it from me. And I praise God for that. So anyways, so embrace the climb. So I make this, I make this personal with me. I'm going to drink a bunch. And it, and it keeps it from getting awkward, too. I don't get awkward up here and not anymore. I got, I got a pink Bible, for goodness sakes. And I'm not Methodist. Somebody read that. <laughs> so anyways, so embrace the climb. So I make this personal. When Jesus Christ was walking on the Via Della Rosa, and I had to look at the sorrowful way, the way of suffering. So Jesus Christ was walking on the Via Della Rosa. He had the cross on his back, and he was just going up that climb. That was not a good climb. That, that was terrible. Not only would we have been breathing hard on that road, he would already been beaten, he'd already been scourged, had the cross on his back, he's carrying the timber, and he's walking. And guys, the, I make this personal. This is a personal relationship with us. Listen. That being personal, Jesus Christ was on the, 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 the Via Della Rosa and he was walking, carrying that cross. And he looked over through the crowd and he could see a young man named Tim Higgins. He could see me. Yeah, you guys were there too. But he's seen through you guys and he's seen me. And he said, listen, Tim, you're going to struggle with a bunch of things in life. And I'm doing this for you. This is why I'm doing this for you. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He was literally going to the way of the sky. He was going there on my behalf. That's why it's a personal thing, guys. He done something for me that I could not do. He done something for you that you could not do. He done something for me that you could not do for me. And that's why I worship him. That's why I praise him every day. Thank you, God, for another day of life. So anyways, like I said, that was embrace the climb. Jesus Christ did not turn back from it. The resistance came. Every beating they gave him, he said, you know what? My carnality, my flesh is wanting to fail. Jesus Christ done that in the flesh, guys. His body battled him, and he said, you know what? I don't care what you say, body. I'm going to the cross. I'm not going to die before God says that it's time for me to go. Jesus Christ, he, he literally, God is in control of life and death. He has all power. He is sovereign. And he embraced that climb when he was on that, when he walked up that road, he was embracing it. And you know why he was embracing it? He embraced the cross so I could embrace God. Before he went to the cross, I could not embrace God. There was a gulf between me and the Lord. It is nothing I done. I was born into it. It's nothing my dad done. It's, the, it's what Adam done. Adam is the one that created the gulf between God and man. And Jesus Christ is the one that bridged the gap. So it is literally, I am holding on to the hand of Jesus, and he's holding on to the hand of God, and he, he is my pipeline to the Father. It is through him. And he embraced that. His body, guys, he done this in the flesh. There was nobody else that could hang on that cross but him. He is the only one that can endure. Most of the people died way before they ever even made it to the cross. But Jesus Christ didn't because he said, Father, I will go all the way because those people are going to need me one of these days. And I thank God. So anyways, um, so, so, so if Jesus, so if Jesus' body fought him the whole way, and the Bible says as Jesus is, so are you in this world. Your body is going to fight you too. His body fight him knowing. See, this body don't want to do anything good. This body only wants to sin and do what and, and, and does what pleases itself. I'm living testimony, guys. I, I've done some stuff. It just came natural. Like it came natural. That's why when God came to me and he said, when he first saved me, he said, don't be so hard on yourself, young man. 
He said, the, re the flesh reaps corruption. He said, you never knew how wrong you were until I showed you how right I am. So therefore, he, he, God was showing me that everything that I had done previously to knowing Him, I just did it in the flesh, and it felt good for about a split second. It said sin is only good for a season. And it said it will always expose itself. So anyways, that, that's all the flesh wants to do. And even Jesus' body Himself was fighting Him when He was going to the cross. So the older you get, don't, don't find it strange that your body's going to fight you. But this is a test that... As this thing gets tougher and tougher, are you going to cave in? Are you going to go along with it? Or are you going to press in? And I believe you got to press in. I believe there's that there, there is scripture after scripture after scripture of people who pressed in and persevered. I believe the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed in. She did not go the way everybody else went. And I guarantee it said that she went and sought you know, medical advice and all that. And the doctors did everything they could. And I believe that and when she went and sought that medical advice, I believe it just wasn't her in the room. I believe there was other people in there seeking yeah. that too. And, and, and I believe she was sitting there. She goes, there's got to be something more to this. There's got to be some. I've exhausted everything. And when she finally got to the end of herself, she said, you know what? I've heard of a man. This old boy here, I've heard of a man. And I'm telling you, he is a good, good father. And as soon as he pressed, as soon as she pressed in, she didn't. It wasn't easy for her. Her body was fighting her. The Chosen does a really good job of, of depicting possibly how that could have been. Like she was a mess. She was unclean. She was a mess. But you know what? As soon as she fixed her eyes upon the one who could make this, who could take her wrong and make it right, she pressed through. And just like a coyote, when a coyote preys on something, a coyote, I've always heard that a coyote, when it when it zooms in on something, it puts blinders on to where it does not even look around. That's why there's been attacks on playgrounds with one screaming kid. A coyote won't even pay attention to the teachers or anybody. That one screaming kid, it gets it gets zoned in on it. You know what? I believe it's time that the church put some blinders on and quit looking around and press in. Because you know what? When I when I don't have my blinders on, I'm looking at everything the world has to offer. Why do you think there isn't? The churches aren't full because the world has everything to offer. But it's time that the church literally dig in and say, you know what? As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. I don't care what goes on. I got blinders on, and I am going to the I'm going to the Lord. I don't care what happens. I am already set. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Pastor Clark, he's mentioned this, and this sticks with me for as it will stick with me for the rest of my life. He said, I can. I will and I'm going to. Every time I go up that hill on Spider Ridge, I literally at the bottom. I don't do it when I'm midway. I do it at the bottom. I do it before I before the resistance even comes. I already purpose in my heart. I don't give a rip if there's one person coming to the house of the Lord to worship. I will be in the house of the Lord to worship because He is worthy. Because I can, I will, and I'm not going to. It's a no-so. You have to know-so. It's down deep in your heart. I don't care what everything. It don't matter. Hell freezes over. We're going to press forward. The church has to press forward. For too many years, it is backed up and backed up. It is time that we take back what was given to us and stand on the Word of God. For it is written, for it is written, for it is written. When my body fights me, I say, for it is written. Man don't live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that's where my strength is in. My weakness, His strength is made perfect. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Listen, my, I was taught, and, and, and I thank God I would not change anything the way I was brought up around wrestling. I, I worshipped it for many years, but I don't give a rip. I would not change anything about that because the, the, there was a man that, 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 that poured so much of his life into me and taught me so many things that I didn't even realize that neither of us were saved at that time. And, 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 and he didn't even realize most of the things that he was teaching me would be tools that I would need for when I get older, when I was walking the Lord. And I thank God many years later that me and him both are serving the Lord now. But it was taught to me as a young age that you got to be hungry for it, kid. I don't care how hard that guy has trained. You've got to be hungry for it. You know why terrorists are so hard to fight? Because they believe in what they're fighting for. They believe it 100%. You know why Christians should be hard to press back? We should believe. We should believe in what the Word of God says. And when we believe what the Word of God says, and we're endued with the power of God, nothing can stop us. God said the gates of hell would not prevail over my church. It's time that we walk in victory. Not, oh, one of these days I'm going to be in victory. No, I'm in victory now. I live a victorious now. I live a healthy life now. Because of what he done on the cross. And I thank God. But you cannot back down. You cannot bend. You have to continue to go. Everything that I pretty much did, God wants me to do, I don't want to do it. I don't. I didn't want to come here and work on this place. I just want to come here. But you know what? If I don't, who's going to do it? It's a calling on me. 
I don't try to rally everybody together to, 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 to fulfill what the will of God is for me. You guys have your the will of God on your life and you do what God wants you to do. But as for me, it is worship for me. And that is me just bringing a fragrant incense to God when I'm doing exactly what he called me to do. You know, and I just praise God. But like I said, guys, you got to be hungry for it. You've got to be hungry for it. It's something you got to want. People will go do everything in this world because that's what they want to do. You need to do what you don't want to do, and that is worship the Lord. Nobody wants to worship, but but you have to. You got to know. You got to know so deep in your heart and what He done for me. It means everything to me. So I just praise God. If you want to get a song, if if, if anything is bothering you guys and you're hindered in any way, you got to press through. You got to press through because most of my prayers, I'm asking God for this and asking God for that. And he's like, do something about it. He goes, quit out, do something about it. God has given us an able and willing body. And not only that, he gave us the spirit of God. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It is us. Everything is on us. God is not doing another thing for the church. You know what? He wants the church to do something for itself. And it's time that we stand alone on what the Word of God says and not stand on, on, on all this other stuff. Well, this and that, this and that. No, we stand on the Word of God, and that's where our strength is. He said that a, a house must be built on a firm foundation. And just like this church is built on stones, my firm foundation is a solid rock of Jesus Christ. He is the chief cornerstone. He always will be. I don't care what comes to pass. In this life, I will stand on what the Word of God says. And I praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.